Okay, welcome. Uh, today we're going to look at maintaining sustainable mountain bike trails. So mountain bike trails are uh, obviously used for recreational purposes, yet they are um, vulnerable to natural processes that can lead to things such as erosion. So today you're going to look at some of the things that can be done or um, uh, design processes that can be implemented to make sure that mountain bike trails you are in charge of are either sustainably managed or the design in the first place is appropriate. So we're going to look at the IMBA, so the International Mountain Biking Associations, 11 principles of trail design. So this might mean that, uh, okay, for example, you might uh, be in a position where you are not designing and building trails, but you might be in charge of maintaining them. So making sure that our mountain bike trails meet these principles uh, is obviously a way in which we can ensure sustainability. Sustainability so that uh, these trails can be there for some time for future generations and also to make sure that um, current usage is uh, kept in a sustainable manner so that everyone can have fun out on the trails. So our first principle, first of the 11 principles of trail design is uh, regarding where trails are actually located. So I can see here, number one, the first principle is to locate the track on a side hill. So what we're looking at today is obviously trails being put in place in uh, natural environments and slope and gradient is obviously very important for mountain biking. Without slope and gradient, you probably have quite a uninteresting ride. The gravity creates interest downhill, uphill. So locating a track on the side hill, as we can see here, is much easier to drain water away from a track located on a slope rather than one on flat ground, and it's easier to keep users on the track. So as we can see, we need to locate tracks on the side slope. And we were able to see that uh, quite easily when we go to Wayne Richards. The second principle, avoiding the fall line. So tracks should always climb or descend a slope gradually rather than traveling up or down directly. That will mean uh, an easier path for the mountain bikers and it will also lead to less uh, water erosion, erosion that takes place uh, because of rain. Excess rain might lead to erosion and then you might lose a lot of soil. Your tracks might uh, have some um, Erosion happen like we can see here, where we get small gullies uh, occurring. And that uh, obviously leads to dangerous situations for mountain bikers, but uh, a loss of soil, which is a significant issue. So the third rule, use the half rule to guide track alignment. A track grade should never exceed half the grade of the side hill it is located on. So let's have a look at this. So we've got two diagrams on the side. We can see that the side slope, so the hill has a 20% gradient. Now, the trail itself, the slope of the trail, whether you're uh, moving down the trail or up the trail, depending upon what's intended, shouldn't exceed 10%. If it exceeds 10%, like the one uh, at the top of those two diagrams, we can see that that breaks the half rule. This will lead to uh, significant erosion occurring on that, and water will flow down the trail at quite a significant rate. Whereas we can see the trail below on the le on the right hand side, with the the average gradient of the trail being eight percent, water will flow uh, over and uh, continue on its path down the hill rather than travelling down the trail and leading to gully erosion, like we saw on the last slide. Okay, so what's sustainable? Now, sustainable grade is obviously you've got to take into account fitness levels. Trails are designed for people of all, all abilities, usually, or a range of abilities. And to maintain a, a grading of less than 10% for a, an entire uphill section is important. So slope and gradient, uh, as we can see there, you've got some, uh, some percentages and um, angles indicated. To have a uh, slope greater than 10% would mean that it's really difficult uh, for people to climb that uphill section. It will also mean you might have significant issues with water erosion unless you're on a very, very steep hill. So it's important to have trails uh, with uphill sections of an average gradient of 10% or less. 
Okay, the next one, we're looking at maximum sustainable grades. Now, this takes into account a few different things. Obviously, the slope of the hill, but also the soil type. So is it a sandy soil? If it's a sandy soil, it will obviously lead to greater erosion or um, increased uh, threat of erosion because of the soil type. Now, in rocky or durable soil, uh, like we can see here on the far left, you can have an approximate uh, steep gradient of 15% over a short distance, whether that's uphill or downhill. And this will mean that uh, if the area in, um, might uh, experience rain, you won't lose any soil. So it's important to take this into consideration as well as one of the 11 principles of trail design. So maximum sustainable grade depending upon the soil type. Grade reversals. So again, this deals with water and um, the trails being able to shed excess water. It also leads to more enjoyable trails. So making sure that our trails have a grade reversal. What this means is uh, a subtle uh, drop or rise in the trail to avoid uh, water continuing down trails. What happens if uh, water is able to um, maintain its path on a mountain bike trail, it will lead to gully erosion. Whereas these subtle rises and falls allowed the allows the water to continue down the slope, down the down the hill and drain away from our trails, leading to obviously sustainable trails that don't have significant erosion. So making sure we have grade reversals, those subtle rises and falls in the in the track every six to sixteen meters. The other one, outslope. So the actual trail itself should be slightly sloped towards uh, the hill, towards downhill. So our outslope rather than having an inslope. So what this means is that water can again uh, flow down the hill as it usually would uh, because of gravity, uh, continue across the trail, maybe at a slower rate, but eventually keep flowing downhill in its natural uh, process. What happens is if you have an inslope, so like we can see here on the um, diagram, you would have water pooling at the left of this trail. So it's important to have these berms and sloughs to ensure that uh, the water can uh, flow across the trail and continue in its natural um, process downhill. And this outslope uh, percentage or gradient needs to be roughly 5%. Not too steep, um, but enough for the water to funnel down into um, the, uh, the valley below, for example. So the next one, the soil type. So when we uh, do some field work, we'll be able to notice that in different areas, even uh, at Wayne Richards, have different soil types. So designing the track to meet the soil texture. So that might mean some areas might need to be flattened out because they're at more risk to erosion. When you take into account uh, steep uh, slope with sandy uh, soil type plus water, you'll get erosion. So that might mean that some areas need to be flattened out or um, some rocks or some gravel needs to be uh, infilled to ensure that uh, erosion isn't taking place. So have a look at those different types of erosion and that's what we want to avoid when we're um, designing and maintaining sustainable mountain bike trails. Okay, the next one. So when uh, we design or maintain trails, we want to look at areas that have uh, suffered significant soil loss or damage or erosion. So ensuring that these areas that we might note, uh, we replace that soil with appropriate types of soil. And we also aim to armor or guard against further soil loss. So here we can see a berm, uh, obviously uh, riders, moving up or down the hill and these areas can suffer from erosion whether that's from um, people overusing their brakes or whether it's the the flow of water down those trails we can see that rocks have been used to make sure that people stay on the trail and also to ensure that we don't lose soil so significant uh, armoring needs to take place in these areas and we'll be able to notice that when we're at wayne richards so minimizing user caused soil damage and displacement Okay, number 10. So we might already have some signage in place at particular trails, but this needs to be appropriate, clear, easy to read and interpret from people uh, by people of all ages. It needs to show the different uh, levels or um, uh, I guess significant range of 
difficulty in the area. So our typical and IMBA um, standard is similar to um, s snowboarding or skiing. So green, beginner, that being the easiest, obviously um, not as steep, easier to maneuver around tight corners and not too many technical features. Whereas you move through to blue, it's getting a little more steep, some more technical features, other things that might cause beginner riders grief. And also then we get to black, obviously steep, rocky terrain that's difficult only uh, for people who are advanced. So making sure that our signage is up to date, that it's clear, easy to read and reflective of what's actually out there. That's really important and is something that you need to look for. In the last one, maintenance. So taking into account maintenance, uh, obviously we've been looking at some of the issues when you uh, combine mountain bike trails and water. So maintenance needs to take place often. It needs to be based upon these 11 principles and should always focus on allowing water to drain off the track and containing users on the track. So uh, appropriate signage indicating that trails are closed during times of heavy rain is obviously important. And you can see here just a web update letting people know that the trails are closed because of significant, um, because of significant rain. So this obviously needs to uh, take into account a few things. Obviously, uh, uh, usage patterns, uh, it needs to take into account the amount of rainfall. Soil type is also important as well. Different soil types can have different levels of percolation. Percolation, fancy word for saying drainage. How quickly does the water drain through the soil? Clay soils have very poor drainage. Then, so there might be particular trails on the mountain bike, um, in the mountain bike park that might need to be closed for longer periods of time because they have clay-based uh, trails that remain sticky, wet and uh, obviously not very nice to ride through when it's been raining. Whereas other trails that have uh, sandier soil, um, soil that uh, drains a little quicker might be, be able to open up earlier. But maintenance is very important, needs to take place regularly and obviously should be uh, communicated to all uh, appropriate people. So there you have it, the 11 principles outlined by the IMBA of uh, sustainable mountain bike trail design and maintenance. Knowing these 11 principles will be important and you'll need to know each of uh, those and some of the specifics for those for the upcoming multiple choice test that you need to complete below. Thank you.